Tell us how you came to be here. My car broke down. And I liked what I seen here and I stayed. And where had you come from? I had originally come up from Las Vegas where I'd been living for the last two years. Doing what down there? Retired. Mm -hmm. That's uh, retired, working a little. I came up here, liked their mission, stayed, help out, had a heart attack and open heart surgery and they stuck by me, so I'm sticking by them. You had open heart surgery in Oregon? Yeah, right up here at the VA. How are you now? I'm still kicking. And that valve's still going for <laughs> What else can you say? So this is a long way from Las Vegas. Right, a long way from Michigan. A long way from Ontario. Ontario? Yeah. Tell us about that. I'm the only American in my family. All the rest live up in Ontario. They're dead now. Mm -hmm. And you got to Portland how? What brought you here then? My little Kia. Say what? My little Kia. It uh, died up in, uh, what's that town I just out here? No, it, it's the end of the red line. Gresham? No. Well, before Hillsboro. Beaverton? Beaverton, that's it. But why were you here from Las Vegas? I had went up to Seattle for a funeral. Last of what I call my brothers. We spent 18 months together in Vietnam, and I'm the last survivor. So, you do, you make a commitment when you're 20 years old and you stay by it. So you, um, people in your, in your, it was the Army? It was in the Army. We uh, were convoy protection. We had a gun truck. And the four of us, we stuck it out together for 18 months and uh, swore that we'd take care of each other and be there for each other. And you did? For 40 How years. Many, wow, 40 years. But uh, something these young people don't have is commitment. I see him smiling when I say that. <laughs> Well, that's a beautiful story. Yeah. But that's the way we do it. So now you've found other people that you're sharing your out. life with. How is that here? I... Our mission is to put people to bed, give them a safe place to sleep. And the ones that show a hint of responsibility bring them in as members, retrain them, retrain their skills, get them on the computer, help them find a job. That way they have the money to move on and help them ease their way back into society instead of permanent homelessness. And that's what I liked about that is the homeless helping the homeless. We, you know, we have to get to know each other, and we got to work with each other to keep the place safe. And uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot of different background people, and we do get some turnover. It's not like, uh, you know, it's not. I've been here almost a year, and I've seen maybe five to seven different people, members who are no longer with us. And um, you know, uh, there was one member here who who went back to uh, Houston, Texas, and told me that. You know, you stay in your lane and you treat yourself as a steward of this place, not, you know, as a, you know, as an owner or, a, you know, I'm paying rent here or I'm the, I'm the work, I'm the furniture. And uh, being a steward of the place that it really does become a kind of an oasis where, 
you can save time or you know save money or uh, you know save on you know wear and tear on your body find some you know a different uh, different you know way to maintain yourself through this, these times and um, I haven't uh, you know most people would uh, you know think what are you doing I go well I'm, it's like I'm in middle school doing art and uh, you know and hanging out in the cabin I'm, I'm still on summer camp and uh, um, you know, I grew up in a family where my dad was a school teacher, and so we were always part of the, the you know, what was going on. And so I really feel like, uh, you know, we're like the faculty on, you know, on staff all the time. And um, if we don't care, well, it reflects, and then you know, as soon as we turn around, then things go wild. But if, being that, you know, since we do care, that it shows in, you know, in the kind of place we got and the membership we have. and. You know, having to have this many people living this close to each other, without really, you know, we we don't let's not say it's, there's not incidents, but it's pretty peaceful. You know, it's I'd say in a lot of other places it's not as you know, and we're kind of, you know, I'd say semi, you know, like the 4077, a mass unit, and so we have our you know our radar, our O'Reilly moments, and our people we got to run to, and our little hierarchy, but you know, and what we're, you know whatever's on the menu it's trial by fire you know and and uh hopefully we you know don't have a fight or don't have you know somebody try to jump the fence or whatever you know so our men's women's and couples tent fill up every night um the men's we have to turn men away almost every night um there's a greater need for men's spaces than any other um the women's tent usually fills up every night but sometimes not as much um in the winter time we can sign up as many as 75 guys for 42 spots um and we are always turning men away every time 